Hey everyone, if you're looking for an OBD2 diagnostic tool that is fairly inexpensive but gives you a lot of features, this is a tool you want to try. This is the X2 A30M. It's a wireless device that you can connect it to your phone. So we're going to hook this into two different cars so we can see what type of functions you can get on each one of the vehicles. One will be a gasoline car and the other one will be a hybrid vehicle so we can see what you can do with this device. This device has a, a switch, two switches uh, for a light. So there's an, a light in here, just in case you want to uh, be able to see where you have your OBD2 connector, you might need to get underneath the vehicle. Uh, so it has uh, this light so you can get a better visual of your connector. As soon as you plug it in, it will power up your unit. It gives you the actually battery voltage. So this vehicle's voltage is 11.6, the battery's weak but it should not affect your communication, or at least for this vehicle. And also you have a couple of LED lights. Uh, the red will indicate that you are uh, connected, you have power and ground, and it will start to flash once it starts to communicate with your device, which uh, in this case is gonna be a, a phone. Navigation is fairly simple. And this is our screen once you have our connection. And as you can see the OD tube, uh, it has already shown us 14 volts as a charging voltage, a blue light indicating that you are connected to the device and then we're going to be able to navigate through the system. So once you open your device, the, the navigation is fairly simple. Uh, the first thing you would do, uh, check for any updates. Your car, your device might have some updates available. If it's up to date, it'll tell you it's already up to date or otherwise you can download the updates, the updates are really fast to download and apply. If we exit from there, uh, if you want to have a direct uh, connection, if you want to navigate EC, here's what you're going to look at. Uh, you can come here where it says uh, functional test. And these are the type of functions you can do, special functions like a power balance test, ABS leading, TPMS reset, all your reset electronic parking brake reset so if you have electronic brakes uh, on the rear uh, part on the rear of the vehicle electronic brakes you can't do the brakes without resetting the parking brake so this has that function electronic power steering adaptation instrument cluster uh, if you want to do your throttle you clean that throttle you want to uh, reset it reset or relearn the idle speed you do the throttle adaptation if you do any type of work on the AC system you can relearn it uh, suspension airbags instrument cluster it has a lot of functions so this is an easy navigation to go into a component so if I want to do electronic parking brake then you could just select the vehicle and depending on what you want to do you can go from there so let's exit from here and let's go to the home page Meta so you could either select diagnostic, select the vehicle, you can do OBD2, the generic mode, if you wanna look at monitor status, uh, freeze frames, uh, codes, read erase codes, uh, you could do that, or you could select the manufacturer, or you could do just an auto scan. So in this case, we're gonna work in, be working on the 2022 Hyundai Sonata. So if we auto scan, it'll scan the VIN, that's one way of uh, navigating, or you could do a manual mode. Uh, we're gonna select US, and here we have the VIN number of this vehicle. We're gonna select OK. Please connect to the network to ensure the security can work normally. Uh, we're gonna do system selection. Under system selection, this is all the computers that you can, you can connect to, the engine control module, automatic transmission, ABS, air conditioner, a rear view monitor, front view camera, a radar, front radar, integrated body control module, integrated body control uh, unit, TPMS, power seat module, cluster. You have all kinds of computers on this vehicle and you can connect to each one of them. So if we just select engine, We can read diagnostic trouble code. So this vehicle has a check engine light. 
select codes, read DTCs, and we have misfire codes, injector B uh, circuit open on all injectors. We were doing a power balance test on this car. It has a uh, freeze frame, so you can read the freeze frame for each one of the codes. So if I select read freeze frame, it will give you the freeze frame for that car. So you know under what conditions the problem occur, it gives you fuel trim data, uh, manifold pressure, engine RPMs, vehicle speed, ignition timing, mass airflow, TPS position, how long has was the engine running during that time, uh, fuel level, uh, throttle position, uh, the electronic throttle, uh, multiple sensors on it. It gives you all the frame, all the freeze frame when the, sold, when the code was set. So you can turn it into a graph mode uh, that frame so we're gonna exit from here we're gonna exit a great thing about this tool is that you can look at live data if I select live data I can look at uh, several pits parameter IDs uh, you can see battery voltage voltage at ignition key actual engine RPMs master flow sensor value uh, the units you can always, always switch it so if you want to turn it into grams per second you can switch it to grams per second intake manifold pressure water temperature voltage iat intake air temperature engine oil pressure uh, this pits will vary based on the year make model so some manufacturers will give you more data than others in this case it's the Injector pulse width in milliseconds for each injector. Uh, so you have all kinds of data. Fuel pump really on and off. As you can see, if we scroll through them, you have multiple, multiple functions, multiple data that you can get. So you have access to a lot of information. Uh, battery current, the AMS system. Water temperature sensor again, master flow, ignition voltage output in degrees, uh, you name it. You can look at all the data. This data will vary based on manufacturer. Like I said, some vehicles will give you more information, some vehicles will give you a lot less. And each one of the data, see if I just keep scrolling, look, it's, it's a lot of information. So if I come back again to the top, and if I select engine RPMs on the right-hand side, I click on that arrow, it'll give me a graph mode I could also turn it into a tachometer. So if I step on the gas pedal, as you can see, it will respond. So it works great. I could turn it back, uh, bring it back to the regular data or graph mode, depending on what you want to do. It will give you or record the maximum, minimum, maximum values if you want. So you could always change that. So that's live data. That's a great tool to have whenever you're diagnosing. You want to be able to look at data information. Let's exit from there. Let's try actuator test. This function is a great function to have in any scan tool. It's a bi-directional function that allows you to turn on and off devices to see if they operate or not. During this, you have a lot of control of multiple outputs. Uh, we'll see what the manufacturer gives us. So this will depend on the manufacturer specifically. Uh, some manufacturers will give you more features than others. So I could turn on the EVAP canister off, the fuel pump relay on and off, the AC compressor, uh, ignition coil uh, enable, disable. That's a power balance test. You could also disable each cylinder, uh, like injector disable cylinder number one to number four. This is a four cylinder engine. Uh, cooling fan uh, pulse width modulation, electronic motor control, uh, variable valve timing, uh, EGR, you could turn on the EGR, you can crank your car with the starter relay on and off. So these are the multiple functions you can do. Uh, Alright, so let's go ahead and perform uh, some function tests on the engine management system. Uh, we're going to select actuator test. And then this type of test will depend on the manufacturer. Every manufacturer will be slightly different. Some will give you more functions than others. In this case, we're going to disable one cylinder at a time during the power balance test. When we disable a cylinder, we're looking for an RPM drop. 
So we're going to start with selecting cylinder number one. So if I select cylinder number one, it will disable the injector, press start, and just start to run rough, indicating the cylinder is working. We stop. That cylinder was working properly. We go to cylinder number two, press start, disables the cylinder. There's an engine RPM drop. Then we stop. Then we go to injector number three, start, disables the cylinder. There's the RPM drop. Stop. Then injector number four, disable. And the misfiring, cylinders are working. No RPM drop will indicate cylinders not working. Okay. There's multiple tests you can perform. The some output controls can only be energized when the ignition is off. This is based on manufacturer. So if I select the AC compressor, that's the relay. We if we energize it, we should hear a click on your compressor. Here it is. So let's see the actuator test. What can we do on this? Uh, battery charge, oh, compression test. So you know that this uh, hybrid vehicle does not have a regular starter motor. We use the high voltage motors. So uh, let's say you could select data, let's select all, press okay. And then it could go into the compression test mode. So it could uh, do a compression test on your engine. So this will allow the engine to crank at a lower RPM because these engines will normally crank approximately about a thousand RPMs. But your compression test should be at a lower scale. So you can do a compression test. Let's exit from here. Driving the battery cooling fan. So you can turn on the fans on the high voltage battery. You can look at data while you do that. You can select, you can customize or select everything. So I'm just going to select OK. And these are different speeds. Speed number one, number two, three, four, five, six different speeds on the high voltage. Meta, stop recording. So here we are connected to a hybrid vehicle. So let's see how this <clears throat> scan tool does with a hybrid vehicle. So we can select auto scan. This is a Toyota. North America. There's the VIN number, RAV4 hybrid vehicle, system selection. And let's start with the hybrid system. I want to see how, how well it does with hybrid. So we could do hybrid control. And let's look at light data. And you can see here engine calculator load it's off the engine it's off right now map sensor pressure iat vehicle speed how long the engine has been running throttle position <clears throat> battery state of charge 53 percent that's the delta charge and those are your monitor status if they're complete incomplete fire neutral range switch shifter position temperature of your motor generators number one number two the last it was recorded uh let's kind of scroll i know i'm scrolling a little bit fast i just want to see how much content we could get accelerator pedal brake power neutral range again let's see let's find a little more useful information Engine stop request, idly request. So right now the engine is stopped. General torque. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I want to see if we can get the temperature of or the voltage from your batteries. We just saw the state of charge of the high voltage battery, but each battery should have a block. Here they are, battery blocks. Each block, you can see the voltage on each block. The actual live current voltage on each one of them. We have a total of uh, 17 blocks on this car. Actually, voltage 14.4. Um, temperature of your battery. So it has multiple temperatures on your battery. So you can monitor the temperature of the high voltage battery. 
uh, operation of their fans, how much uh, frequency is sent to each one of the fans, how much duty cycle, and internal resistance of each block, the delta state of charge. So we have pretty good data. So I like how much data available we have on a hybrid vehicle on this device. So let's see the actuator test. What can we do on this? Uh, battery charge, oh, compression test. So you know that this uh, hybrid vehicle does not have a regular starter motor. We use the high voltage motors. So uh, let's say you could select data, let's select all, press okay. And then it could go into the compression test mode. So you could uh, do a compression test on your engine. So this will allow the engine to crank at a lower RPM because these engines will normally crank approximately about a thousand RPMs. But your compression test should be at a lower scale. So you can do a compression test. Let's exit from here. Driving the battery cooling fan. So you can turn on the fans on the high voltage battery. You can look at data while you do that. You can select, you can customize or select everything. So I'm just gonna select okay. And these are different speeds. Speed number one, number two, three, four, five, six different speeds on the high voltage. Meta, stop recording.